this video is all about my thoughts on the current building climate, why I am not worried, and three tips for you running your business through this next 12 month period. Personally, my company, Your Place Building Co, is in a really good, strong position. We have no debt over any of our vehicles or equipment. We share a building space with my dad and that means we've got really cheap rent and we're making smart decisions like that. We have cash in the bank and no overdrafts. Do you know I've operated most of my businesses without an overdraft for 10 years now? It doesn't mean that overdrafts are bad. I personally like to have a cash buffer to weather a storm. I'm making a number of decisions about what work we take on and what work we don't take on. Does that make me and my company bulletproof? Are we immune from this? boom bust cycle definitely not i mean everyone is at risk but by reducing some of those things by having a strong cash position by making smart choices with debt and by building up a team you are able to ride out and weather the storm a little bit better than most rather than waiting two or three years for your project maybe now is the time to build and it's not should you build or should you not build it's who you should build with and i think that's the most important work out who you should build with make sure they're a good operator make sure they're in a good position and then just commit to your project now's the time where builders are available where material supply has caught up now is the time to sink your teeth in to your next project so right now companies are dropping like flies it's starting to happen even in our local neighborhood there's a lot of building projects that have ground to a halt as interest rates have gone up and house prices have come down that's also put a crunch on future jobs in a period of growth it's real easy to just keep signing up jobs and not back costing properly not really understand where your profits coming from and that's fine while we keep signing up jobs because you keep getting deposits, you keep doing some work, you get some money in. But the tail end of finishing a job is long and expensive and you've got to account for all of those little things you need to do to get that job all the way through to the finish line. And we've gone through this last two year period of insane growth. It's easy to think about like it's been frantic for ages. But actually it's only been the last two or three years where it's been up and up and up. I remember back in 2016, it was still pretty quiet. There were people then struggling to find work, to pay their bills, and then it ramped up, it ramped up, it ramped up. Consents are peaking at about 50,000 right now, but pre-2008 crash, they were around 30,000, and they're projected to come back down to 30,000. So me personally, this is my jobs board um, right here, jobs underway, under contract. And last year, this was full down to here. And you can see now there's half the jobs on the go. And so am I worried? Yeah, we need to scale back slightly, but I've still got a bunch of really solid jobs on the go. I know exactly how much work's involved in that for my team and I've projected out how long I can keep them busy for. And then I've also got a leads board over here of a bunch of clients that are still interested in building. And I've talked to all of them personally. I've talked about their situations. I understand what hoops they're navigating for finance. And the majority of those people would still like to build at some stage. Their projects that they took on are still viable projects. It's just we're now navigating different conditions for finance. When you have a higher interest rate, it means that the costings of your project now get tighter. And when the value of your house comes down, there's less reward. You know, it means you've got to think about the scenario differently. It's easy to commit to building when money's really cheap and values are going up and up and up. And when those things change, it starts to mean people reassess their projects. It's real easy to overreact both ways. And, and building is this classic boom, bust, famine, feast cycle. On one hand, you got all this work coming out your ears and you can't keep up. You're like, right, we're five months out. And then you have these weeks where you're like, I don't even know what the boys are gonna do tomorrow. Where has all the work gone? It can be this huge, big up and down. And it can be like that financially as well, especially if you're doing big projects and your money is tied up in progress payments to hit milestones. And then you get these little delays that drag your milestone out. And sometimes it is a matter of weeks that affects the cash flow. If you're in a business and you're worried about the next 12 month period, here's three tips that I'm thinking about for my company that I wanna share with you. Number one, you gotta to stick to your knitting. 
In a time like this, it's just as important about what jobs you say no to as well as what you say yes to. If you say yes to a job out of desperation because you're worried and you're not quite the man or woman for the job and you don't do that job justice, that's going to be just as bad and just as detrimental to you and your company and your client as if you didn't do the job at all. And so I get it, it's really hard to say no to a job when you're not sure what's around the corner, but by having a really solid understanding of what you're good at, what your strengths are, you can focus on them and you can double down on them and you can do a really good job of that. So if you're a bathroom kitchen reno man, double down on bathroom kitchen reno. If you're a new build guy like me, work out a way to double down on new builds or work out a way to add another string to your bow. We've taken on more landscaping jobs than we previously would. We already did that as part of our houses, but now we're expanding that part of the company. Work out some of the things you're good at, stick to your knitting, double down on that, work out what to say no to and don't just say yes to everything. Tip two, it's working on your mental health, remembering that you are not your business, that they're two separate things. And so your business can be struggling, but it doesn't mean that you have problems and it doesn't mean that you're struggling. And so the problem is we're often like this, we're so intertwined, but you want to create a little bit of separation between you and your business. You want to look after your mental health. You want to, you know, go for walks and runs and talk to people and write stuff down. And you probably don't want to double down on the beers and those other addictive things. Yeah, sure, enjoy yourself, but make sure you're looking after your frame of mind because your frame of mind will help you make more positive decisions which leads to one thing after the other after the other. Sometimes you can't change the environment you're in and what's happening. The only thing you can change is how you feel about it and everything you do there's always a silver lining. For me personally and a lot of the people I know in the building industry right now, we're enjoying having a few less jobs on the go and being able to do a better job of the jobs we've got on the go. I think the other thing is you've got to expect that sunny days are there. There's this really cool one minute video from Headspace about rainy days and how, you know, when you're in a storm, it just feels like it's going to be dark and gloomy forever. But have you ever been in a plane where you go up, up, up above the clouds and it's just crystal clear blue sky everywhere? So think about that. There's a blue sky and the sunny days out there. This storm will come and go. It will pass. If you found any of these tips helpful, can you do one thing for me? Go ahead, click subscribe, help us lift our count. Tip three. I think the thing for me is I'm planning to be in this building game for a long time. So as well as expecting good times, I've got to expect bad times. I've got to hope for the best, but I've got to expect the worst. And I've got to have a plan for both situations. And I think that's key is if I know that a storm is around the corner and that I'm going to have to batten down the hatches and ride it out, it changes my mindset, as the tide goes out, you see who's wearing no pants. And there's a lot of building companies out there right now that are wearing no pants, and the tide's gone out, and you're gonna see them go under. But there is a bunch of us operators that are in a good position, that have been doing this for a while, that are passionate about doing it well, that have great staff. Those operators will be here for the long term, and they will ride out the storm. It's a delicate balancing act of making sure we have the right amount of people for the right amount of work and making sure that we've got the right people as well, being really selective about the people we take on. Personally, I'm looking forward to this year. I'm looking forward to consolidating my company. I'm looking forward to doubling down on my systems and processes. I'm looking forward to having fun again and bringing the joy of building and creating houses back.